Hi friends! Welcome to Preschool Storytime with the Long Beach Public Library. My name is Ms. Shana. If you haven't signed up for summer reading yet, you can do so by visiting longbeach.beanstack.org. And if you are signed up, make sure you get the special code here, SCARLET, and enter it into your Beanstack challenge to earn a point for joining us at Storytime today. We're going to sing a song about the colors of the rainbow because this year's summer reading theme is Reading Colors Your World. So if you're wearing any colors or your favorite color, listen, and then I'm going to ask you to do something if you're wearing that color, okay? If you're wearing any red, any red, if you're wearing any red, any red, if you're wearing any red, put your hands up on your head. If you're wearing any red, any red, if you're wearing any orange, any orange, if you're wearing any orange, any orange, if you're wearing any orange, hug yourself to keep warm. If you're wearing any orange, any orange, if you're wearing any yellow, any yellow, if you're wearing any yellow, any yellow, if you're wearing any yellow, shake around like your jello. If you're wearing any yellow, any yellow, if you're wearing any green, any green, if you're wearing any Scrub your hands until they're clean. Good. <laughs> if you're wearing any green, any green. If you're wearing any blue, any blue. If you're wearing any blue, any blue. If you're wearing any blue, reach down and touch your shoe. If you're wearing any blue, any blue. Violet, any violet. If you're wearing any violet, any violet. If you're wearing any violet, fly your plane just like a pilot. If you're wearing any violet, any violet. Very good, friends. <laughs> the color of today's story time is red. I'm thinking of something that's red that tastes sweet or sour. It's covered in tiny little seeds and often we'll eat it in ice cream or with shortcake. A strawberry, that's right. I'm thinking of something red that is big and makes a loud sound and helps Put out fires. It's a fire engine, that's right. I'm thinking of something that's red, that crawls, is very, very tiny, it can fly, and sometimes it has little black polka dots. I'm thinking of a ladybug, which means it's time for our first story. Our first story is called The Very Lazy Ladybug. It's written by Isabel Finn and illustrated by Jack Tickle. Look at all the red with the black polka dots. <laughs> the Very Lazy Ladybug. This is the story of a very lazy ladybug. She liked to sleep all day and all night. Because she slept all day and all night, this lazy ladybug didn't know how to fly. Oh dear. One day, the lazy ladybug wanted to sleep somewhere else. 
But what could she do if she couldn't fly? Then the lazy ladybug had a very good idea. When a kangaroo bounded by, she hopped into her pouch. But the kangaroo liked to jump. I can't sleep in here, cried the lazy ladybug. It's too bumpy. So when a tiger padded by, she hopped onto his back. But the tiger liked to roar. I can't sleep here, said the lazy ladybug. It's too noisy. When the crocodile swam by, she hopped onto his tail. But the crocodile liked to swish his tail in the water. I can't sleep here, said the lazy ladybug. I'll fall into the river. So when a monkey swung by, she hopped onto her head. But the monkey liked to swing from branch to branch. I can't sleep here, said the lazy ladybug. I'm feeling dizzy. Ooh. So when a bear ambled by, she hopped onto his ear. But the bear liked to scratch. I can't sleep here, said the lazy ladybug. He'll never sit still. So when a tortoise plodded by, she hopped onto her shell. But the tortoise liked to snooze in the sun. I can't sleep here, said the lazy ladybug. It's too hot. So when an elephant walked by, she hopped onto his trunk. At last, thought the lazy ladybug, I found someone who doesn't jump or roar or swish his tail or scratch or swing or snooze. But at that very moment, the elephant <gasps> sneezed. And the poor old lazy ladybug had to fly at last. There she goes with her wings spread wide. She finally learned how to fly. And that was the very lazy ladybug. I'm thinking of something that's red that grows out of the soil, has green leaves, and often we give it to somebody that we love. I'm thinking of a rose. That's right. I'm thinking of something red that is a fun snack to eat in the summer. It could taste sweet or sour. It's not a strawberry. Cherry, that's right. Our next story is called The Big Umbrella. It's written by Amy June Bates, co-written with Juniper Bates. And I picked this story for today because what color is the big umbrella? It's red, that's right. Looks like it's a cloudy, rainy day. By the front door, there is an umbrella. It is big. Do you have an umbrella? What color is your umbrella? Oh, mine is black with white polka dots. It is a big, friendly umbrella. 
Is your umbrella big and friendly too? How many people would you say could fit under your umbrella? It likes to help. How do umbrellas help us? They help protect us from the rain, maybe leaves falling, or even the sun's rays. It likes to spread its arms wide. Looks like a very happy umbrella, doesn't it? It loves to give shelter. How many people are under the umbrella right now? One, two. Mm -hmm. oh, it loves to gather people in. How many people are under the umbrella now? One, two, three, four. Looks like that umbrella just keeps getting bigger, huh? It doesn't matter if you are tall or hairy or plaid. This person's wearing a plaid coat. See the little squares on it? It doesn't matter how many legs you have. Some people worry that there won't be enough room under the big umbrella. But the amazing thing is, there is. Look who's coming out of the clouds. There is always room. It's a lot of people fitting under that umbrella, huh? The end. This is the story of the little red hen. I'll be telling a different version than this book here by Paul Galdone. And there's many different versions of this story and I'll share all my favorite ones with you at the end. The Little Red Hen. Once upon a time, there lived a cat, a dog, a pig, and a little red hen. And they all lived together in a cozy little house. The cat liked to sleep all day. The dog liked to nap all day. And the pig liked to snooze all day in the warm chair by the fireplace. So the little red hen had to do all of the housework. She cooked all the meals and washed the dishes and made the beds. She swept the floor and washed the windows and mended the clothes. She raked the leaves and mowed the grass and hoed the garden. One day when she was hoeing the garden, she found some little grains of wheat. Who will help plant this wheat? cried the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. Each morning, the little red hen watered the wheat and pulled the weeds. Soon, the wheat pushed through the ground and began to grow tall. When the wheat was ripe, the little red hen asked, who will cut this wheat? Not I, said the cat. 
Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. When the wheat was all cut, the little red hen asked, Now who will take this wheat to the mill to be ground into flour? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. The little red hen returned from the mill, carrying a small bag of fine white flour. Who will bake some bread from this fine white flour, asked the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. She gathered sticks and made a fire on the stove. Then she took milk and sugar and eggs and she put them in a big bowl and mixed them all together. When the oven was hot, she poured the, the batter into a shining pan and put it in the oven. Soon a delicious smell filled the cozy little house. The cat got off her soft couch and strolled into the kitchen. And the dog got up from the sunny back porch and came into the kitchen. And the pig jumped down from his warm chair and scampered into the kitchen. The little red hen was just taking a beautiful loaf of bread out of the oven. Who will eat this bread? asked the little red hen. I will, cried the cat. I will, cried the dog. I will, cried the pig. But the little red hen said, All by myself I planted the wheat. I tended the wheat. I cut the wheat. I took the wheat to the mill to be ground into flour. All by myself I gathered the sticks. I built the fire, I mixed the bread, and I baked it all by myself. And I'm going to eat it. And she did. After that, whenever there was work to be done, the little red hen had three very eager helpers. The end. If you liked that story, here are some other versions of The Little Red Hen you could check out from the library this summer. The Little Red Fort by Brenda Meyer. Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion by Alex T. Smith. And The Little Red Hen Makes a Pizza by Philemon Sturges. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to sign up for summer reading at longbeach.beanstack.org. Take care. We'll see you next time.